Hey everyone, welcome back to another OZ Reacts, and today I'm going to look up the most beautiful places to photograph in Canada because obviously this is majority of photography channel. Well, used to be Canada is a picturesque place to obviously photograph, and I've got a little website at the moment here at Planet Wear. So we've got the 15 most beautiful places to photograph. Canada's beautiful landscapes and intriguing cities lend themselves to photography. Beautiful pictures, all part of a visit, regardless of where you travel, where you travel in the country. Remote wilderness, they will find you capturing the wild scenery, jagged mountains and picturesque lakes of Rocky Mountains in BC and Alberta. Another huge reason to visit Western Canada with your camera. Central Canada, the prairie, the prairie provinces offer their own unique beauty particularly in summer when the fields bloom bright yellow and canola sunflowers in the fall. Ontario parks offer fabulous opportunities to see leaves showing off uh, their showing leaves showing off uh, their colors. Showing off their colors. I think that's what's supposed to say. So Moran Mor Moraine Lake Rocky Mountains are home to the most spectacular scenery in Canada. Turquoise Lake surrounded by snow-capped peaks, particularly those in Banff. Mm-hmm. While Lake Louise tends to get all the attention, Morian Lake, just a short distance away, offers incredible scene. Okay, so, okay, because I was going to check up Lake Louise later, actually. So where are you then? Because I know where Lake Louise is. Where is it, actually? It's it's in this area somewhere, hidden. Down over here. Actually, that's uh, very nice, to, easy to get. Oh, Lake Louise. Oh, so Lake Louise is there, but if you keep going down this way, Ooh, that's actually a nice hidden gem. I didn't even know that one. Let's go in a quick look. Oof. I'm just, I'm just so jealous. I'm so jealous of you, Canada, man. That's, that's outrageous. Alright, Lake Louise, I'm going to do a little react video later, but where is it? Like, how how do you have that? <laughs> how does that how does one exist? How does that exist? That's incredible. Hey, I digress. But polar bears in Churchill, northern Manitoba polar bears can transit through small town city of Churchill. Photograph for wildlife photography in Canada. So this can go out in the tundra, which allow close-up viewing of the bears' natural habitat. They'll just leave them alone, to be honest. <laughs> Canola Fields in Manitoba, Saskatchewan. That looks nice. Traveling in the lovely city of Winnipeg, heading west across Manitoba and Saskatchewan. During the month of July, you can expect to see fields of bright golden yellow. Nice. Looks good. Canola highlights of the summer drive across Canada. Find a high vantage point to photograph from. All okay, patch trees. The barn. Add some perspective of your image. Niagara Falls. Now. I've heard that the better side is the Canadian side, so that's good to know. Beautiful sight, any time of year. You can always capture good photos here in the summer, but winter offers truly something special. The ice covering railings of tree limbs and giant plumes of mist rising in the falls still on still days make some great photos. Many attractions in Niagara Falls offer a great way to see the falls opportunities for beautiful photos. Ontario in the fall. Canisby Lake, Algonquin Provin Provin Algonquin Park. Lakes and forests of Ontario make for spectacular photography. For photography, some of the best places to see for colour are in Ontario's parks. In southern Ontario, the winter colour change begins in mid-September, peaking between the end of September and the middle of October. Some areas like Algonquin Provincial Park are the high elevation than other parks in the city of Toronto. That's where the park, you can expect bright yellow oranges, yeah. Now this is going to be in Halifax, yeah, because we saw this in the other video. Sites in Eastern Canada, Peggy's is an icon, iconic East Coast image, a day trip from Halifax. This is the beautiful place to photograph any time of the day and any season. Icebergs in Newfoundland. Mm. So obviously, when other Canada's most photographic annual spectacles, the stream of icebergs that flow in the east and east each spring. Right. Yoho National Park, which I just saw there. Yeah, no sh National Park Yoho. 
but is less known like Beth and Jasper. It's not Jasper. The Alp thanks comments. The alpine scenery of mountains, crystal clear lakes, meadows, and huge affordable waterfalls offer unparalleled opportunities for photography. Emerald Lake is one of the highlights. Lake O'Hara is another gem, but access is restricted of maximum number of visitors. Interesting. Why is that? Guessing the wildlife. Tofino and Pacific Rim National Park Reserve. Along the western coast of Vancouver Island, I see is the small town of Tofino. All right, just gonna go quickly through these now. Historic streets of Quebec. Yeah, that would be a very nice, like, historical, like, urban place, like, old urban place to photograph there. Narrow alleys and historic buildings are a dream for photographers. Ottawa and the Canadian Tulip, Fe Tulip Festival. Ooh, has wealth of sights all year long. Watch locals skating down the Rideau, around the Ri Rideau, Rideau, <laughs> Rideau Canal in winter. Explore the city centre in the spring. Don't miss, don't miss the city's colourful tulip festival. See, see so bright flowers provide the perfect foreground of shots of apartment buildings and the Peace Tower. Nahani National Park Reserve. Yes, pronunciation. Yes, hopefully. Canada's far north least explored area in the country, but home to some of the most rugged and beautiful scenery. Nahini National Park in the Northwest Territories is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and home to huge waterfalls, raging rivers, granite spires, and mountains. It's known widely in the canoeing community as a bucket list destination. There's, how many more is there? Clu Cluane. Cluane National Park and Reserve. Largest ice field, the highest peak, Mount Logan. <laughs> Cluane National Park is a treasure trove for beautiful photographs just waiting to happen. It's also habited for grizzlies, glaciers, mountains, lakes, wildlife. Beautiful park in the Yukon. Oh, it's up there. Beautiful. Look at the... That's another photo where it's like three seasons in one. Like, you've got the... Like all the grass vegetation in the right, and then it gets colder, it's colder, it's colder, ice, and then snow. Like, that's crazy. Gulf Islands in BC, Vancouver and Vancouver Island, wonderful place to explore by Ferry Island Hop. Explore small towns like those found in Spring, Salt Spring Island, uh, for watch for wildlife, bald eagles, whales, and other marine life. Ah, uh, yes, the colors of St. John's. I've seen this one in the previous video. Walk down the city past brightly painted buildings. Loads of excitement on your photos. He'll make Im images even much more impactful. All right, so just another quick reaction as well. Now, I couldn't find many um, different, um, I guess, photo location videos on YouTube or anything. So closest I came was the to top 10 most Instagrammable spots in Canada. So uh, I'll just check out this quickly. Why not celebrate by visiting the nation's most picturesque landmarks? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most Instagrammable spots in Canada. Grossmore National Park, Newfoundland. Okay. On the west coast of Newfoundland hmm. lies Grossmore National Park, one of the country's most otherworldly places, and a spot many Canadians don't even know about. There are many beautiful things yeah. to see there, but the yeah. most awe-inspiring views come courtesy of a boat trip on West an option from June through October. Was that that wasn't in the the list before either, I don't think. 600 meter rock walls. Yeah. Create a spectacular view from every angle. Kind of reminds me of uh, the, fjord, which is the Norway one nine the ones in Norway. Oh yeah, I saw this um, in one of the videos in Newfoundland, yeah. Number 9, CN Tower, Toronto, Ontario. In terms of the most recognizable man-made Bil landmarks yeah, in building. Canada, the CN Tower takes it without a fight. Toronto is the country's most populous city and boasts a vibrant community of people from all backgrounds and walks of life. Toronto's skyline, meanwhile, is iconic because of the needle-shaped structure that can be spotted from almost anywhere in the city. The best place to get a great shot of the tower is across the water on the Toronto Islands. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I was hoping that they would describe the exact spots to best see them best see the, like the landmarks so that's good uh, they did mention that also fun fact um sydney tower in sydney i think i don't have the thing in front of me but you know i've i've been up there and they had like a little list of all the different sizes of the towers and i'm pretty sure the tip of it is the 
like the the top of it is actually where the um, observation deck is. So the CN Tower is uh, massive. Located within Prince Edward Island National Park is one of Canada's most beautiful beaches. This eight kilometer or five mile stretch of sand and shore okay, well, of St. Lawrence is perfect for a day of fun in the sun, but can also produce some dramatic photos. The red sand dunes lead into soft white sand beaches that make for some incredible shots and a backdrop you won't find anywhere else. Remember the rule of thirds when photographing the shoreline. Uh, yes. For a unique photo that doesn't look like everyone else's, try to get an object of interest in the foreground. Number seven, Whistler Village and Whistler Blackcomb. Whistler, British Columbia. British Columbia's Whistler Blackcomb is North America's largest ski resort and one of the most visited ski hills in the world. Hmm. Located a short drive. Yeah, it's gonna say it's near, this near is a must uh, visit for Vancouver. Sports enthusiasts and photographers alike. There are tons of great shots to be snapped here. From snowy panoramas to more extreme shots from. Just wanna one sec. I wanna check something out. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's our. Uh, Outrageous, man. Like, look at that view. And that is, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. The runs themselves. If you're not a skier, however, you can still get some great photos of Whistler Village or ride the peak to peak gondola, which goes between Whistler and Blackcomb Mountains for some incredible aerial views. Number six, Peggy's Cove. St. Oh, Margaret's there's Bay, Nova Scotia. Uh, Nova Scotia this again. picture perfect area on the shore of St. Margaret's Bay in Nova Scotia is enough to make anyone feel overwhelmed. Massive boulders that have been smoothed and rounded by the Atlantic jut out into the water, making you feel like you're on rather than near the ocean. The biggest photographic obstacles here will be the thousands of tourists who visit the cove and nearby lighthouse every day, as well as the rough, unforgiving waves. Danger can be averted by staying off the wet black rocks, while crowds can usually be avoided by visiting at sunrise, when you might just have the whole place to yourself. Number five, Old Montreal. That's very rare though, because even in Sydney anywhere, like there's at least a couple of photographers always out there, so no, I think there's always a fair Montreal, few. Montreal, Quebec. Architecture and culture offer a surprise at every corner. And old Montreal or Vieux Montréal and its adjacent old port Montreal. make you feel ah. you've been transported okay, back in time. With its cobblestone streets, the Bon Secours Market, the Montreal Clock Tower, as well as views of the iconic Jacques Cartier Bridge, Molson Brewery, and Five Roses Flower Sign, this area is a photographer's dream. As you wander through the narrow ruelle, you'll have a plethora of photo opportunities, be it horse-drawn carriages, striking buildings, or the flurry of activity in the area. With Montreal's 375th birthday taking place in 2017, that's um and this area especially Notre Dame in um Toronto, Montreal. Four, Sorry. Fundy, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Oh, so it's the same one again the in the previous video. Range, the Bay of Fundy one that rises over 15 meters. New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. The most visited attraction here is the Hopewell Rocks area, which is on the New Brunswick side, and which you'll recognize if you've ever seen photos or time-lapse videos of the difference between high and low tide. Yeah, that's the other video, the other one, the other video I didn't have, which was the, um, the rise, the rise of the water. Yeah. You've ever seen photos or time-lapse yeah, videos that's great. of the difference between that. high and low tide. Explore the ocean floor at Hopewell Cape or kayak around the giant rock formations when tides are high. But whatever you do, keep that camera handy. Number three, Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, Ontario. Bit of a no-brainer. Canada's most spectacular natural wonders is undoubtedly Niagara Falls. Made of three distinct waterfalls, the American, the Bridal Veil, and the Horseshoe Falls, it's no secret that there are incredible views everywhere you look. So you could easily spend a whole day snapping pics. On the Canadian side of the falls, the best time for photos is in the early afternoon because the position of the sun lights the water perfectly. Right. And That's while good, you might not think know. to visit then, the falls are actually just as stunning in <laughs> winter night. as they are in summer. So it's really a destination that can be enjoyed year round. Number two, Aurora Village, Yellowknife Northwest Territories. That's one of the most incredible locations on our list is also one of the most remote. Yellowknife is lauded as one of the best places to see the Northern Lights in Canada, and Aurora Village is an absolute must to make it an unforgettable experience. The Aurora Borealis is best viewed in August. Aurora Borealis. No. <laughs> a few tips: remember to make reservations and pack a DSLR. Your phone might not hmm. be able to capture the full majesty of the night sky. Make sure to get comfortable with your.
Nothing wrong with phone cameras, but no, SLRs are, yes, always the way to go. Camera and its settings, though, before heading out for the best possible photos. Before we unveil our top pick, here honorable. are a few honorable mentions. Lake Louise, number one. Grasslands, if you Nice and flat. Number one, Lake Louise, Banff National Park, Alberta. The Rockies are one of Canada's national treasures, and within Banff National Park lies an area that's considered the jewel of the region, Lake Louise. I hope I don't get there and like I've seen it already a hundred times and I get there and it's like, yeah, it's I've seen it. I don't think so. Surely not. The emerald colored waters are very still, giving you the perfect opportunity for incredible reflection shots. I'm guessing different times of the year, like the temperature and everything, it, the, the look of it, it would always change. Like summer, there would be probably no snow or and then winter, obviously the snow would be like an icy lake or something. The majestic Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise provides an anchoring backdrop in photographs. Yeah, see that right there. The mountains are imposing and epic in scale. The nearby Jasper National Park is almost equally wonderful, so a trip to the area isn't complete without hitting both. But wherever you go, keep your shutter finger ready and prepare to be amazed. All right, one more. The Fairmont Chateau Lake Lake Louise. The time lapse of the Fairmont Chateau of Lake Louise. It's one thing I wanted to check out. I'm just like focusing on like the water and the clouds it's in the mountains in the background. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it, it moved. Oh, it's moved again. <laughs> I'm just focusing on the lake, just trying to see if it deteriorates in the... Oh! Oh, no, it's gotten a bit more ice. It's pretty solid. Oh, there it goes. Night turns to day. There's still some ice in the, in the corner there, that's... Look at it just move like that. Oh, there it goes. There's still some ice, it's holding on in the summertime. Alright, thank you all today again on a reacts to Canada and I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you wanted to do any more because I don't know any more other ones I want to do. Maybe if you want me to react to lacrosse or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, thank you all again. Until next time, I'll see you then.